Today is another one of those days when I'm not 100% sure what we're going to be doing, but I am quite sure that it's going to be fun. But first, we're going off to the grandparents' daycare. I like grandparents' daycare, it's brilliant and cheap. I have heard rumours that there is a new front-end Model S in Solihull. In fact, I've heard rumours they're everywhere except where I went. So we'll see if I can resist going there. Probably won't be able to. You're really not a big fan of Jasper, are you, Millie? For some reason, I'll never understand. Millie is absolutely terrified of Jasper. Jasper! What are you driving, Jasper? A sports car! A sports car? What kind of sports car is it? A Lamborghini! I hope he's careful not to drive into my car. Ah, he's a talented driver. I think we're going to see if we can find that new front end. Because I hate the fact that I didn't get it to see it last time. So, we're going to head off and see what we can find in beautiful Solihull. Okay. So you might have noticed, we're not in Sally Hull. That is because I have reviewed the schedule and decided that actually, I, I didn't want to sit in rush hour traffic and I lost too much time uploading the uh, today's, uh, yesterday's blog post it. Internet, not as fast as I would like it. You know, I hear these rumors of people that get Actually, when, when we were down in um, at, at the uh, Peel House B&B in Limington, they had very fast internet, really fast. Oh, it was amazing. Uploaded a whole vlog post in 20 minutes. That's not here, unfortunately. Anyway, so not going to get to see the new shape Tesla today. Instead, we're going to talk about something that uh, I've been wanting to bring up for a while now, which is the future of medicine. I went to a London futurist meeting at the, it was the Bloomberg building in London, at this sort of conference-y thing. Interesting group of people, very interesting. There were basically three speakers there. There was one who was focused on sort of the future of decision-making and large-scale organizations, which is kind of an, an all-encompassing sort of chat, that one. There was a guy who was there talking about artificial intelligence, and he was actually the reason why I attended at all. And that was sort of fairly interesting. And then there was a guy from GE Healthcare Life Sciences, this was a fascinating talk. He went through what GE is currently working on and other technology associated with medical science is sort of moving forward. And it's just, it's mind blowing. Some of the things that they can do now, like take a skin cell and turn it into an embryonic stem cell called a, a pluripotent cell. And then they can take that cell and turn it into any other kind of cell that they want, whether it's a sort of a cardiac cell or a nerve cell or a pancreatic islet or whatever it is that they want to create out of it, multiply it many, many times and then implant it back into you. And because it is from you originally, it doesn't require sort of immunosuppressant drugs or anything like that. So they can basically sort of build you new bits of the body. I mean, they're not quite at the stage where they'll build you a whole new heart, but they can build you a bit of new heart, things like that. And it's just incredible. And the applications in particular on the fight against cancer and things like that, 
some of the advances that are being made are really astonishing and they are often held back by the price of the treatment. One of the ones that they've had lots of success with so far in very limited trials. You may remember a story on the BBC News about this, about a little girl that had leukaemia and was their parents were basically told to take her home for sort of palliative care, make her comfortable in her last days kind of thing. And they wouldn't accept that, as I'm sure most parents wouldn't. I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but she wound up on this trial where they basically take her immune system, genetically modify it and train it to attack the cancer cells. I think something like two or three weeks later, she was basically clear of cancer as far as they could tell. And there'd been a, a number of cases in the US where they've done something, you know, using the same technique. I think out of 14 people, 12 of them made a complete recovery. Really amazing stuff that's, that's coming down the line from a biological sciences point of view. It often takes quite a long time for these things to become commercialized and available to the masses. And often people don't even know about you know, what, what is and isn't possible. Often the problem is if when it's a trial being run by a big company, the treatment might cost $10 million and the company will foot the bill for that because they want to find out if it works. But it's not commercially viable at that price point. So, but you know, as with anything, the more they do it, the cheaper it gets. So, I think that's probably all I'm going to say on this subject. What I am going to do is I'm going to link in the description below to the London Futurist video that is on YouTube of this talk. It is sort of pushing in the direction of an hour long, so it's sort of fairly in depth, but I highly recommend it for anyone who's interested in the kind of things that medical science will be able to achieve in the very near future. Well, we're on the way home and I still haven't seen the new shaped Model S front end. Oh well, I'm sure I will get my opportunity in the near future. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you all tomorrow for the next installment of